All right. Hello, everybody, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you happen to be. Uh, welcome to our little webinar, Turn the GA4 Time Crunch into New Opportunities, brought to you by Evolytics. Uh, before we introduce ourselves and get and get the party started, we've got a few housekeeping items, as always, to cover. Um, at the bottom of your screen, there are multiple engagement tools that you can use. Um, every app on that screen is resizable, movable, so, so feel free to kind of get things moved around so you get the most out of your desktop space, see what you want to see, less of what you don't want to see. Um, we will have, uh, if you have any questions, there is a Q&A tool there on your screen. Just ask them at any time throughout. Uh, we'll try and answer them. Anything we can't answer during the webinar, we will contact you with the answer. And finally, under the resources section, you can read the full uh, bios of your of your charming and uh, knowledgeable panelists today. So uh, enough of that. So we'll keep moving on. Um, here's what we're going to be covering today. Now, most of you know that GA4 is coming. You probably know a little bit about it. So you know, we'll, we'll talk about what it is and some I, things about implementing it. But one of the things we really want to talk in about here is how this can be a really great opportunity to rethink and improve your analytics and overall data collection uh, in, in your organization. So, um, you know, for those of you who are new to Evolytics, our mission is to help our clients make a positive difference with data. Uh, you know, we do that, we have expertise and provide services in a number of related areas. Now today, Obviously, you know, talking about GA4, we're focusing on the collection and implementation area, but in a modern marketing technology environment, some or all of these other areas are gonna come into play in your organization. A little later on, after they've kind of gone through, you know, some details about GA4, I'll talk about some ways you can build upon the work you do getting GA4 to expand what you're doing from a MarTech standpoint in your company. So, uh, now, you would be surprised if you walk into the Evolytics office at any time that not everybody there is wearing a dark blazer and a light blue shirt. But uh, these are your panelists today, and we'll uh, all say hi. Uh, start with a good-looking guy over there on your right. My name is Jim Bradley. I'm a director on an analytics development team, kind of specializing in overall marketing tech architecture. Um, been involved in this space for about 10 years, and before that, many decades doing the IT thing. Uh, Mark, you're up next. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, name's Mark Richard. I'm a director on the analytics development team. I've been working with analytics platforms like Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics for, oh gosh, it's going on 20 years now. I started working with Google Analytics probably just prior to the release of Universal Analytics. Um, I think that was around 2012. Um, so I think I've been using GA now for about 12 years. Uh, Dave? Yeah, hi guys, my name is Dave Fimmick. I'm a director in analytics developments uh, with the, the rest of the team here. Um, primarily work on implementations, but I actually got my start as a military analyst. Uh, I've been working in analytics for over 15 years now uh, and primarily in the Google suite of products. So I've been uh, using this tool since uh, um, when it was brand spanking new and acquired by Google when it was Urchin before and now it's GA. So I've got a bit of a history with the platform. Um, but I'm going to dive into it with you guys, uh, you know, just to introduce you to a little bit about what we're going to be talking today. Um, goodbye, Universal Analytics. Welcome, GA4. Um, it's a uh, it's a change to be sure, and you know, hopefully, um, in our conversation today, we'll figure out uh, ways that it can benefit you. Um, but some important information right out of the gates is collections to Universal Analytics web properties will cease on July 1st. 2023 for standard Google Analytics users and October 1st, 2023 for 360 enterprise users. Um, after at least six months, your universal analytics web properties and its associated properties will be removed from Google Analytics. Uh, this will affect all UA web properties without exception. So generally large scale changes to Google Analytics roll out in phases, which is why I think there's gonna be a loose at least six months promise of data retention. Um, so. That'll be the minimum for you. Uh, you may actually be one of the lucky few that's later in the, the, the rollouts, if that's how they're going to approach it and do it. Uh, so why is Google doing this now, right? Um, the ecosystem of analytics since GA's birth has been, as a product, has drastically changed over time. Uh, GA has had to adapt to the rise of multi-device users. Uh, each of us here have laptops, smartphones, desktops, tablets, and many other devices 
that create challenges on the current platform of understanding the user. Um, it has faced challenges with legalities and local laws as citizens and governments become more conscious of this data collected and the possible usage. I'm sure we've all heard of GDPR, uh, the changes in the EU, California, Germany, that sort of thing. Um, the technology of cookies has been archaic for a while in terms of accuracy and reliability. Uh, ownership over, over that key value of who the user is needs to be transferred from users themselves into the systems we manage as um, analysts and implementation specialists. Now, GA4 represents an evolution of a product, and while it does present to us many challenges and growing pains, uh, it aims to open the door for new opportunities. Now, this is uh, you know a little bit more about GA4 getting to know it. Uh, it's an entirely new approach to Google Analytics. One of the biggest changes is the shift from UA's scoped structure with a variety of hits, uh, hit types to a clean event-based model. You can see that over there on the chart on the left, you see the, the variety of UA hit types compared to GA4's measurement, which is just event, 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 event. Um, this standardization of hits um, hit types removes a lot of the reporting conflict that can typically happen in universal analytics. Now we're migrating away from these pre-baked data types. Where we have to cleverly find a way to get working together uh, into a much more flexible gathering of raw ingredients to do with as we please. Now anyone that's been in the UA interface has experienced odd results when crossing scopes in the same report. It's not always clear how the metric calculations happen when layering in together user versus session versus hit scope dimensions. If you've ever had a wonky report where the metrics don't quite line up, quite line up to your expectations, it's usually due to the different hit types. Uh, the kicker is too that the interface here is getting slow. Um, I don't know about you, but I've spent a lot more of my time, the more I work with the tool looking at loading screens. All of these pre-baked solutions are trying to fit together in our reports and it's really ramping up the load time and server time that Google has to uh, uh, use. Now, difference aside, uh, what new opportunities does this structure open up for us? Uh, for starters, engagement metrics are getting a lot more intelligent. For example, bounce rate, which is currently defined as uh, one single hit to the GA database without a subsequent hit, is replaced by what they're calling engagement sessions. Bounce rate is a binary did they, didn't they metric centered around one point of measurement. Whereas something like engaged sessions are users who lasted longer than 10 seconds or had a conversion event, or had two or more screens or page views. Now, GA4 has the ability to understand the user's focus and site engagement in a more proactive way. Uh, understanding user engagement is getting a whole lot more accurate because of it. Things will get a lot better for your UX designers, your content creators, or anyone that struggles with telling the story of what happened before the conversion. Um, not all of us work directly in e-commerce. Not all of us have a very clear finish line in terms of understanding uh, um, our users. So those engagement metrics are critically important, especially in people in the vertical of like publisher space or ad serve. A lot of this has to do with GA4 moving uh, the understanding of this data in-house versus relying on cookies and that's uh, and the user's technology to send this information. So a good example of where we've seen this upgrade before is in session duration and campaign uh, timeout tracking. Back on GA Classic, before Universal Analytics, there were five or so cookies that the user took on to track certain values. One of those cookies had their campaign information, um, but when Universal Analytics rolled out, it brought it in-house. So if you go now today in your UA admin interface, you can configure all that information. Um, this is not a cookie-dependent feature anymore. Now, GA4 is moving away from cookies. However, it isn't out-of-the-box truly cookie-less at this point. Um, there's still a single cookie that does identify the user. Now, this progress opens the door for all sorts of cool new things we can do with our data. Um, BigQuery integration will no longer be locked behind G360 license. BQ is still a paid platform, but it's cost-effective way to store data. Um, Google Analytics can be a really great hub for your information, but BigQuery can also serve that purpose if you have a lot of um, downstream services that you want to latch into. Rollup reporting across domains will be simplified with data streams. Uh, GA4 will be able to do machine learning to create blended data to intelligently close gaps in tracking that may occur. Um, it's very common for a user's browser to sometimes have a hiccup or a JavaScript error or there's something on the page. 
that may cause tracking to fail on that one particular instance and that one particular page. Well, um, machine learning and blended data should hopefully close the gap in terms of understanding the continuity of sessions and hits and events. Now, turnkey predictive audiences will create new targets for marketing campaigns. Um, so this is a feature that I know a lot of my marketing friends are particularly excited about, um, taking some of the data science labor out of uh, the realm of folks who exclusively do that and putting it into the hands of some of the AI. There's gonna be less reliance on cookies and more focus on true users. Uh, there's going to be tracking shortcuts that previously took implementation changes. Mark will be showing you that here in a little bit when you watch it through the interface. Now with uh, sampling, I say fingers crossed uh, that with the new simplified data structure, sampling will be a thing of the past. Um, and then finally, these events we've been talking about are much more expansive and customizable than any hit type previously offered by Universal Analytics. A standard event uh, in Universal Analytics generally only is going to house uh, three standard dimensions, the category, the action, and the label. An event in um, GA4 is going to expand all the way out to um, 25 parameters that can be associated with it. Now I'll pass the, uh, the microphone over to, to Mark to, to dive into the interface to show us a little bit more. All right, thanks Dave. Hopefully everyone's having a great day so far. So <clears throat> this is gonna be a walkthrough of some of the highlights in the GA4 user interface. Uh, I'm gonna start with the home screen here. Um, and I'm gonna jump on down to, hopefully everyone can see my screen. I'm gonna jump down to this insights section. So this is an, ex is an example of some of the artificial intelligence capabilities that Dave spoke about with GA4. Um, after, uh, you've got your property set up, your GA4 property set up, collecting data. After some time, um, GA will start showing you insights or recommendations based on the data that it's seeing. And so in this example, this first uh, insight pane is showing us that organic search from Google users um, that came from organic search from Google dropped during this time period. And so if, if you have a team that's, uh, busy working on lots and lots of different things, it's great that Google is there looking out for you, offering up some of these insights to kind of help you um, get started with some of your analysis. Moving on, going into the reports um, window, the reports section of GA4, um, talking about engagement, Dave also mentioned the engagement metric and uh, it's, it, it's somewhat of a, um, a more complicated formula, uh, 10 seconds of focus on the page, or you've viewed more than two pages, or there's been some event track. But the important thing to remember here is that in previous versions of Google Analytics, the metrics were time on site or time on page. And in order for that to be measured, you really needed a user to view more than one page. So anytime, um, there was only a single page view, you weren't really getting a good accurate measurement of time on a page. And the way that manifests within some of the pages reports, so here once again, still in the, in the reports section, um, but now looking at a pages report, um, this is similar to what you might be familiar with if you're already using Google Analytics 3 or Universal Analytics. But for each individual page, we see um, some metrics, but once again, we see that average engagement time. And so once again, I just wanna repeat. So on a home page or a popular landing page, your visitors, your users might only be seeing that page, but in GA3 and previous versions, they have to view another page in order for a calculated time to occur. That's no longer true with Google Analytics 4. Google Analytics 4 also brings some advanced reporting capabilities with the Explore section. This is also known as Explorations. Um, in previous uh, versions of, of GA, this was not available. In fact, you had to buy the, the costly Google Analytics 360 uh, um, premium version of Google Analytics to do anything like this. Um, there's different techniques available when you're in this Exploration section. I'm showing a funnel report here um, you can build custom funnel reports consisting of one or more events. In this case, this is a pretty uh, simple uh, uh, funnel report. 
people start a session, they view the apparel page. I should also point out this data that I'm showing you today. This is from the Google Merchandise Store, and we can provide a link on how you can get access to this GA4 property if you want to start kicking the tires um, with the Google Merchandise Store data. Um, anyway, after viewing an apparel page, they add to cart, they start checkout, and then they complete with the purchase. So your site might not be a commerce site. You can build funnels for people that start a lead acquisition form that make it, you know, halfway through, et cetera. You're only limited by the number of events that you decide to track in your implementation. So speaking of events, uh, Google Analytics 4 is all about event tracking. That's the only, that's basically the only hit type that occurs in, in Google Analytics 4. Um, for the merchandise store, there's a number of events that are being tracked here. But I want to point out that if you're new to Google Analytics 4, if you just set up the configuration tag, the basic tag, some of these events will automatically be collected for you. Examples here include the page view, uh, the scroll, and once again, scrolling is when you hit 90% page depth within your viewport of your browser or your phone. Um, also, other examples are uh, click. So click, that's not a super fancy name for an event, but it's when you exit or hit a link that exits um, off your site to go to another site, such as your Facebook page or your Instagram page or to um, another site, um, you can measure those clicks. To show you a little bit more about how you configure um, this auto measurement, these auto tracked events is you go into the admin section of GA4 and you'll find that there's a data stream section. You'll set up a data stream minimally for your website, um, go into this data stream and you'll see the enhanced measurement or automatically collected events that are occurring. Um, there's actually a total of six that can be, or there's six events currently that are available. In the Google Merchandise Store, they're only doing these four, but uh, to show you what um, the other options are, so here, once again, are the first four that the Google Merchandise Store is collecting, but you can also do automatic tracking of uh, videos. So if you have YouTube videos embedded on your site and you want to measure how people start complete videos and then the percentile progression through the video, you just turn on that toggle right there and you can measure that. Same with file downloads, PDFs, um, Word documents, Excel documents, et cetera. Getting back a little bit to data streams, another thing that's powerful about Google Analytics 4 is it actually started out as a beta product called App Plus Web. And the whole idea is that Google wanted to be able to allow its customers to measure activity from both a web app as well as a mobile app all in one place. And so this is another demo account. This is for Floodit, um, also part of um, Google's available uh, demo accounts. And so as you can see, they're bringing in data from the Android app, the iOS app, and then their web app. And then you can then combine all of those um, data points together in the same reporting interface. Dave mentioned BigQuery. Um, there's also other integrations that can be done. So I'm showing the admin console here once again, and this is um, product integrations. And so if you've set up a Google Cloud um, account and you have a BigQuery project set up, you can add um, the project number information here and data can be set up to export into BigQuery daily. I think even hourly, the data can go into BigQuery so that you can do more advanced analysis with SQL there. Um, with other tools, you can uh, join your Google Analytics 4 clickstream data with other data sources um, for enhanced analysis. And then the last feature I want to show you is within the configure section, you can define audiences. Um, audiences can be used for marketing, for remarketing, for um, reporting and analysis. And I just wanted to highlight um, in this demo account, um, some of these audiences have um, magic wands next to them. And those represent um, audiences that Google has helped generate using predictive analytics. So this is an example. This one I'm pointing out here is um, looking at users that are likely um, to, to, to not return to your site. Um, so in the next seven days. So gosh, that was a whirlwind tour. Um, I encourage you to start kicking the tires of Google Analytics 4 now so you can become proficient at using it. 
before that GA3 sunset occurs next year. And uh, the way to do that is to start dual tagging your site with, uh, with Google Analytics 4. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and toss it back to Dave. Cool, thanks Mark. Yeah, so um, implementing GA4 immediately, um, redefining your company's data architecture and uh, really hitting the ground running with clean, actionable insights. Um, we are hitting um, uh, a schedule, a timeline that is dictated by Google with this sunset, right? As I mentioned before, um, we have 12 months if you're on the free version, essentially. So July is almost over. So this timeline is um, void of dates. Um, however, it's going to be you know dictated by whatever pace that you start working at. Uh, so this is just a high-level schedule of um, what we're executing for our clients today, right? And first, even if you can't execute on anything, you can't deploy on any changes, alter the TMS, um, do anything in your uh, with your developers. It's worth planning out around the event-based uh, model. Uh, because it's not going to be exact when you make the changeover because the platform is so different. Um, get GA4 base tagging deployed right away. Um, Mark just showed you a lot of out of the box things a base tag can do um, that enhance measurement. A lot of things are just, you flip the switch and um, you, you can start having it today. So out of the box GA4 is a lot stronger than universal analytics because it has a lot of those built in features. Now you can have this running um, concurrent to your existing implementation. Um, uh, a lot of folks aren't letting go right away of universal analytics, and that's perfectly normal. There's a lot of dependencies that your organization is going to have that still need universal analytics working. Um, it's also a long time to go without data or without like feature parity. Um, so once that rolling, you build out the robust customizations that are required to take advantage of the new bells and whistles of the platform. Um, you can start building out more complicated and robust events um, in the implementation and pushing that to production. Now that the data is in place, you can start prepping your organization to make the shift to GA using, um, uh, using GA4 in a production capacity. I think this is going to be one of the hardest changes. Um, I know we're talking a lot about the technical shift, but the organizational shift uh, sometimes is going to be the biggest hurdle for most folks. Um, it is different. Uh, the reporting is different. Um, and some people will fear change. And uh, I know I myself, when I looked at GA4, I, I was a bit taken aback and said, this is all different. Felt like it was flushing some of my experience down the, uh, down the tubes when I looked at it. But, you know, after digging a bit more into it, you know, I got pretty excited about it. Um, you also, too, want to start thinking of uh, um, those downstream services that are using it. GA4 or, or GA in general is oftentimes the hub of data for a lot of folks in terms of um, uh, understanding the way that their um, ecosystem works. Um, there may be any dependencies from Tableau dashboards to programmatic media by elsewhere in the GMP that is based off of Google Analytics data that they could affect. Um, that being complete, you can dictate on your timeline when to retire UA for good. Um, so you'll have those two implementations running parallel and, um, you know, hopefully you can make that decision on your terms as opposed to Google's terms. Uh, and last, you'll have a buffer of access to the previous data for historical purposes before finally parting ways with universal analytics. As I mentioned before, it's at least six months, um, but could be longer, could be less. Now, um, Immediate first steps, of course, act now. Each day you wait um, is a day you're going to be missing historic data. No matter what your situation is, you will see a noticeable shift in your data when this changeover happens. Uh, data won't be apples to apples when you make this migration. So get that base tag in place today if you haven't already. Um, the effort is nominal if you're on a solid tag management system. You can usually knock it out fairly fast and just deploy a single tag on all pages. Um, during your planning phase, start by itemizing all of your current UA tracking. This is going to help you prioritize what's critical to your analytics as well as ditch what isn't important and save your effort down the line. You're gonna find while you're itemizing this that there are some tags and tracking features that people just aren't using or aren't looking at or not useful or not working. It's not worth the efforts to develop a solution for if um, you're not gonna use it in the future either way. 
not all your tracking needs to be worth transitioning. Um, not all your tracking can be transitioned either. Um, it's best to find that out during planning as opposed to when you're actually in the execution phase. Now, remember during this, you're not just affecting your GA data. Uh, you know, I can't emphasize this enough. There'll be other downstream platforms using this data, such as dashboards and programmatic media pipe. You want to carve out time during this transition to update those as well. So it's not going to be just about your implementation or just about GA. It's going to be everything that touches that data and leverages that data. Now, some additional considerations here. As I mentioned before, there will be a growing pain moving over because the structure is so different. Because of that shift, if you are currently looking at a website rework during this time, it would be ideal to undertake this project at the same time. Um, you're gonna be adding a little bit more work to the development team and um, I'm sure they have their hands full with a rework. But um, if they're in there at that point in time, that's the best time to engage their, their, um, their skills and to play out the tracking that you need. And this will include things like data layer changes so that um, the throw and catch between your um, relationship between your websites and uh, your tag management system and ultimately GA4 can be um, worked on. While GA4 does a lot of out, of out of the box things, there's still going to be implementation dependencies to really get the most out of Google Analytics or really any analytics platform. Um, this will also make sure that you only see one shift in your historic data. For example, if you branch this out to two projects on two different timelines, you're gonna see a shift in your data when the website gets reworked, and then you'll see another shift when Universal Analytics converts to GA4 for you. Um, so to get over those growing pains, you might as well time them out uh, to, to, with those reworks. Now, analysts reporting against the data will also need time to acclimate to the new version. Uh, having UA concurrently running will provide them with a reporting safety net um, or at least data that they can do a bit of a sanity check against. So again, it will not be complete feature parity apples to apples, but it will still help those analysts transition to the new tool. Um, this will also too, if you have any urgent or critical reports that need to go out fast, you still have uh, that data that you can rely on um, for the time being. Now, what will be critical during this process is clean and meticulous documentation. Um, months down the line, there will be a lot of questions about the decisions made during the transition um, that you won't have answers for unless you wrote down what uh, choices you made. Uh, QA work will be extensive to ensure accuracy as well, since this will be item by item, line by line, new tracking um, in GA4. You wanna make sure that you have a checklist for your development team and your implementation team to work through to make sure that um, everything is operating as expected. And of course, documentation will help guide that. Now we've been in Universal Analytics for a long time. Uh, there hasn't ever been a clean sweep requirement for your data architecture in Google Analytics because of the backwards compatibility. Going from Urchin to GA, GA Classic to Universal Analytics, there's never really been a need to kind of wipe the slate clean. Um, this means over time, there likely has been a lot of technical debt incurred. There's likely been a lot of marketing um, needs that had to roll out last minutes, hot fixes or anything we'll, we'll fix later deployments. Um, this is our opportunity to take what we know now about data and the structure and redesign things in a much more experienced way. That being said, there's a lot more you can be doing, and I'll pass it over to Jim to talk about that. All right, thanks, Dave. I um, also want to remind everybody once again, if you know if any questions come up, you know, as Mark, Dave, or myself have been talking, please enter them in the Q&A pod there on your panel on your screen, and uh, we will get to as many of those as we can. So, you know, you know, as Dave mentioned this, you know, along the way too, that, you know, most of you are aware your analytics data is used for a lot more than just your classic web analytics. It is, the, you know, that data you collect on your website is the hub for, for a lot of different things you do. And so, after you've gone through this process, after you've done, you know, this GA4 implementation where we've reevaluated everything, you, you now have this great event-driven data layer in place, and you can use that to keep building out and optimizing your marketing technology stack. You know, some of these uh, were mentioned, you know, like within the Google space, you know, there's BigQuery, uh, there's integrations with the rest of the Google marketing platform, 
dashboards and use one of Dave's favorite phrases, lots of sweet data stuff that you can do uh, you know, with that along the way. Uh, with inside of your tag management system, you can use that same data and those same events to drive your interactions with your other media partners. You know, as you're sending data to, you know, your display networks or your social networks, uh, you know, that's this, this is an opportunity. Everything's clean. You can take a look at it again and make sure that, you know, all of those are getting the data they need so you can do the work, that, you know, that, that you have to do, you know. Then you start asking yourself, you know, what else can I do? What more can I add? You know, you can think about, you know, do, do we have a testing and personalization tool like Google Optimize or Optimizely? You know, how would that integrate in with your analytics, you know, so you can get that, you know, so you can test and see how things are working. Uh, do you use a call intelligence platform, something like an Invoca? That data can also then be start to be brought into GA4 so you can get that true interaction of, I mean, picture how your customers interact and convert with your brands, you know, instead of just taking a phone call and dropping off, now we can see that they were on this page, they made a call and use that data to, you know, understand, you know, why are they falling out of my funnel? Why are they picking up the phone? Or, oh, they actually really are converting, uh, you know, and now maybe you're starting to think about dipping your toe into the customer data platform pool and what that can do for your business. The events and the data that you're collecting and that you've organized for GA4 can be used to help feed the web information into one of those platforms that you can start taking your business to and your audience management and everything up to that next level. I guess the point I'm making is, is that getting Google Analytics 4 into place is not the end. I mean, you know, it, it, it's a thing. You got to get it done before UA goes away, but it's also a really good place to start taking your data to the next level. Now, you know, where to start, you know, of course, as always, the answer to that is it depends, right? And that's going to be different for each organization. Now, at Evolytics, we've been doing these kind of things with our customers now for the last 16 plus years. And we help our clients achieve success by following our drive methodology. You know, and a rework like we're talking about today is different from adding a, a new event into an an existing system you know we have to go through those different steps like Dave talked about and so in, in, in helping a customer with a uh, who I think for implementation we're going to follow this process you know we're going to start out we're going to want in, in the discover phase what, what are your goals what are your KPIs what are important to your business what do you really need to track and how are you going to use that information then in the reveal phase you know we're going to look we're going to look at the data that's out there now, we're going to look at, you know, say, your existing universal analytics implementation. Where are the gaps? You know, where's, you know, what data is not there? What is not in a good usable format? You know, and make sure we know what all that is. The implementation, which is where uh, Dave and, and Mark and I tend to live, is, you know, as we're going to get in here, we're going to build, we're going to generate the code, you know, generate the code inside of, you know, the, the tag management systems and other places. Uh, you'll develop you know, tracking plan so we know inside of Google where that data is going. We're going to provide, you know, there's implementation so that your developers know how to create those data layer structures, when to make the calls, when to pass the data. Once that's all in place, then we validate, we test, we make sure that it's right. Not just before it deploys, but then you continue to follow up. You make sure that the, that the data quality is there because if your data is not clean, people aren't going to trust it, and then they're not going to use it. So, you know, assuring data quality, good data collection, we're going to make sure the configuration stays right. And then at the end, you know, you're going to examine that. You're going to look at the, you're going to look at the results. You're going to build out your reports. We're going to train, you know, you need to train people, as Dave said, this is all different, how to use GA4, you know, and we help our customers with that process. And then the optimization loop comes back around the other side. Take what we've learned through it, and you can start all over again, right? Okay, we, we went through this. Now, how do we take it up a notch? How do we take it up to that next level? You know? and, 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 and one of the things that will reveal themselves as you go through here are new opportunities, you know, new plays to expand your, your digital marketing stack. Now, at Evolytics, you know, we work with a lot of different brands, uh, different uh, partners, tools, and vendors. Today, we've been talking primarily about Google, but you, know, you can look here on the screen, on your screen, and you'll see we have relationships and experience with, you know, a lot of these tools. And you know, 
just because maybe you're also using, you know, maybe if you use Adobe Analytics, a lot of you also use Google Analytics to help with the marketing side of the house. And, uh, you know, we work with clients who use both of them quite a bit. And, um, you know, and like I said, and while you, maybe you are using GA4 for your analytics, it's really likely you have other, some of these other parts in your marketing tech system that rely on that data. So, you know, this is a sample of some of the various brands that, that we've worked with over, the, you know, both in the past and, and currently in, in, in the different industries that we work with with you know one of the things i'd like to mention is that we were early google analytics for adopters and we implemented on our webs on our own website right after it came out uh, and we've also implemented and supported a number of ga4 tag setups for several clients and a lot of those were even before google announced the uh, universal analytics sunset you know trying to you know help people get out in front of it so they got the data they need that it's clean they have the uh, historical data in place you know, they, they don't have questions because at the end of the day, our job is to make you look good. Um, I think we've gone through most of what we got. I don't know if we have any more questions. Let me see. If... Yeah, we do have a couple up here. Um, oh, has it been answered? Okay. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, if, um, yeah, yeah, I can tackle. Okay. Um, Jan yeah. asked, uh, do we need to export data from GA3 and then import it into GA4? Um, short answer, no. Um, there is not going to be a clean import uh, export uh, functionality to the two different platforms because they're so different. Um, if you are going to or are interested in preserving your universal analytics data, uh, it is recommended that you do uh, export it. Um, BQ is a good reservoir for this depending on the volume of data you want. Um, so there can be several different options for you to export data out of Universal Analytics to have it referenced into the future. Um, the easiest way to do it is just via the interface. In the top right of any report that you're looking at is a little export option that will export all the visible rows. Um, alternatively, there is something called the Google Analytics Query Explorer. If you just do a Google search from that, it will be the first result which allows you to tap into the API and a nice clean interface. Um, so you could export data that way. Um, but there will be no import into GA4 uh, simply because the data structure is so vastly different. Um, now, most of the translation that's going to happen from universal analytics to a GA4 is going to happen at the point of collection. So you'll be restructuring your data collection to try to match as closely as you can to what you had in Universal Analytics to make that growing pain a little bit less. Um, so there's some data continuity there. So for example, an event in Universal Analytics will have a category action label, which could potentially be um, parameters that you can add to an event um, that is related to um, GA4. In all the implementations I'm doing now uh, for the data layer pushes that are happening on the page, um, I'm asking the development team to add in uh, event name to it. So something underscore something, such as like forgot underscore password if the user forgot their password and is, is resetting it with a account screen. Um, this is setting the stage for those parameters moving forward. But maybe I got too far in the weeds on, on that question. But um, again, short answer, there will be no export uh, from GA3 to GA4 um, cleanly. Great question, though. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, and uh, it was asked in the in the uh, Q and A pod. Uh, yeah, this is this webinar is being recorded, and it will be sent out to everybody that is is on it today, so that you can you can look back on it and refer to it. Um, I don't know if anything else. I don't think any other questions have come in. Um, I don't know if Dave, Mark, you have anything you want to add at this point, other than you know we'd like to. You know, thank you for joining us, taking your time out of your day. I know you're all very busy. We all are in this business. And, you know, we'd love to, uh, you know, talk with you if you'd like to continue this discussion and, you know, how we can help support your business's analytics growth and evolution. And you can contact us very simply at info at evolytics.com. Um, what we got? Looks like something else popped up here. Let's see what we got. No. 
So we have thousands of web pages with a one pixel tracking code embedded with GA4. Do we need to change it to fit GA4 tracking? Um, I, I would love to know a little bit more about that because um, there's a couple of layers to it. Uh, we'd need to know like the tag management system you're using if you're using one. Um, but to be clear, uh, GA4 is going to require on-page changes um, uh, for the, uh, or at least within Google Tag Manager. So um, if if you guys have additional questions um, that maybe uh, they might be too specific for you to ask, feel free to reach out to any of us at Avalytics, anybody on this webinar, any uh, or info at avalytics.com for some quick answers. We're happy to help. All right. Well, if if that is that, um, I don't think anybody ever gets too upset if we uh, cut them loose a little bit early and give them some time back in their day. So again, one more time, uh, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your attendance today. Hope you've learned something that you didn't know before you got here. And we would you know, love the opportunity to continue the discussion. Thank you very much.